Yes, you guys, welcome back. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lines TV, and today I'm here to bring you guys another New Zealand video. Today I'm going to focus on three stories, and they are going to be on defenders. Defenders we most likely are going to be seeing for next season. These three players are Thiago Silva, Ben Chilwell, and a free transfer move for Malang Saar. We have a ton of things to break down and discuss, you guys, so I hope you do enjoy. If you like today's video, then smash that like button. Help me get over 4,000 likes for today's video. And for the final plug, if you are already planning to make any purchases for the new home season kit, away kit, training gear, or any new stuff from this season, then I am your guy. In the description below, use my affiliate links, and if you do, you get access to my 10% off discount code, NINI10. So you guys, I'm here to hook you up. And without wasting any more time, we start with the first story today and I want to start with these Malang Sar reports. Now it feels like it was only like a week and a half ago that the fan base was worrying about whether we were going to sign any defenders in this window. Fast forward a week and a half and we're close to signing three players and for the third player his name is Malang Sar. Reports are suggesting that a five year deal has been presented to the player and the player would like to sign it and join our club. Now, if Balang Sar does accept these terms and a deal is completed, he would be loaned out immediately. And based on the current reports coming out from today, it does seem like there's a ton of interest coming out from Bundesliga clubs as well as clubs in Spain as well. Now, I think it's safe to assume that any possible delays in this deal is going to come down to what loan club Malang Sar would actually sign for. You can imagine the player wants to sign for the best loan club possible to boost his chances and opportunities to one day represent this club. Now, yesterday I was hearing that these talks and this news was a bit premature, but it does seem like things are starting to pick up a lot of pace right now. It does seem like Malang Sar was actually offered to us and presented to us by his agent, which makes a ton of sense. I mean, his client is a free option right now. He has a ton of clubs interested in his services. It's only natural that his agent is gonna push his clients to sign for the best possible clubs he can get. Right now, he is being considered as the second free option to sign for this window, but it does seem like Frank Lampard will get final say. So potentially this deal might not even happen if Lampard gave the word saying that, you know what, I don't think he's needed. And you guys, I think from this point on, I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions. Now with Malang Saar, you know, under 21 French defender, very talented, you know, got a good left foot. He's not the finish art school. There's still other aspects in this game you can work on. And personally, I think maybe he's best suited to playing in a back three at this point in time. Of course, being very young, these are quirks in this game that you can overcome, improve upon and become a more complete player. So, you know, getting a long move to a Spanish team or a German team would be the best possible thing for this player. However, right now, we have an overabundance of talented young defenders at this club. Some are still in the academy structure, some are still in the development squads, some are out on loan as well, and some are part of the first team too. I feel like right now we're in a very precarious situation in the sense that with all this defensive talent, we cannot afford to let it go to waste, honestly. In the academy right now, we have MB Amber, we have Levy Corwin as well, Daniel Simu, these are three great defenders, and on loan we have Mark Guy. In the first scene, we have Tamori, even Christensen, he can still improve and he can still grow. So I definitely think that when you're making signings in defense, you have to think about the future. You know, we can't forget that the philosophy we're imprinting and that we did imprint during this first season was to turn towards the academy, give these guys opportunities and game time. I still think that's the goal. And I'm curious to see what the future of our defense could look like. I mean, right now we have an overabundance literally of talented young defenders. Doesn't even seem too unrealistic that maybe one day in the future, most of our defense could be filled by academy grads. I think is a very exciting situation we are in. And I think right now, whatever personal investments we make in those areas, we have to consider the young ones we have and find ways to not block their progress and pass into the first team. But anyway, you guys, to wrap up the story, we are making signings and investments in all areas in this club. We're making big signings for the first team. We've been making big signings for our academy squads as well. And it seems like we are making signings to invest in in the long term. Things are looking beautiful, you guys. It seems like Malang Sar has a real possibility of being one of the next players, possibly the sixth player to sign. And now, we take things forward to the second story today, and I want to speak about the latest news surrounding Ben Chilwell and his updated transfer. Right now, it seems like Ben will be signing a new five-year deal at this club, and when it comes to his wage packet, he'll be earning close 190k per week. 
So of course that is a ton of money and the money just doesn't stop there you guys because on top of the 50 million that we are spending on Ben there are also other bonuses and additional fees on top and at this point in time how much does Ben really cost? I mean, is he going to be up to 65 million or 70 million? You know, what are these clauses inside in the deal? How does it work? Will we ever find out? I'm not too sure, you guys. Now, it does seem like Ben will go for another medical, and it does make a ton of sense. We know that he ended the season injured, a piece of news that all of us just completely forgot. And of course, if we are going to invest so much money into an important player, we need our left back. We need to make sure that his ankle is fully good. We need updated weekly reports. We need to make sure that he is stress tested perfectly. And it's no surprise how the club aren't taking any risks or any gambles. You know, Ben is a player that Lampard has wanted ever since January. He's been the number one left back signing and target to get. Lampard is finally getting his guy. But another reality we have to accept is that when Ben signs for us, he won't be fully fit. So for the first few games of the season, I'm expecting to see Asriel Aquetta play as a left back with Reese James playing down the right hand side. I think we won't see Ben maybe until October. It does seem like his recovery is going really well. I mean, the fact that the club are committing to such a massive deal for a player that is currently injured at this point in time, I think it really tells you everything you need to know about this deal. Now, before I move on to the third story, you guys, I do want to re-emphasize that even though Ben is going to cost us a ton of money, Hopefully we don't use the prize tag against the player. You know, in the modern day world, with modern day football, players are going for ridiculously inflated fees. A 50 million signing used to be a 25 million signing back then. So I think we have to adapt with the times. And the reason why I stress this is that Ben, he isn't being signed because he is the perfect player at this point in time. I think Ben has many amazing top four attributes to his game. 23 years old working in a club that has Ashley Cole, you know, great previous players as well, and in an environment that encourages players to grow and improve and work on their game. I feel like by the time Ben is 25 years old, he could be absolutely complete as a left back. And I think that's the type of energy we need to have for Ben right now. We have to understand we're signing someone that has good talent, but he can become even better over the years. He is a Chelsea fan, and let's give him some slack. Let's believe in him, let's have some faith. I trust my manager, you guys, and if he thinks Ben is the one to sign, then I'm all here for it, you guys. So, on that note, we now end with the final story today, and that's the updated news surrounding Thiago Silva and his imminent move to our club in this window. Now, right now, we have reports coming out from France stating that Thomas Tuchel, President Germain's manager, is trying to persuade Thiago Silva to remain at the club and commit his future here. Now, could Tuchel get his way? I'm not too sure, you guys, because it does seem like Paris saint Germain's sporting director and Leonardo, well, he wants to move on Thiago Silva and get him off that wage bill. So it does seem like any 11th hour propositions made will be falling through. They won't work because Thiago Silva has committed his future to signing for us for next season. And to give you guys a quick recap, he will be signing a one-year deal plus an option to extend by a further year. I can imagine that will be automatically renewed if he meets certain uh, performance clauses in his deal. For example, how many minutes he accumulates during the season. I'm sure it's going to be stuff like that. It does seem like Thiago will be signing a deal that is way less than his current 1.3 milli contracts a week. And reports and rumours are suggesting that this could be around 70k per week with performance clauses on top. For example, it could be things like uh, you know, every time he plays a game, he's earning a certain amount of money. Every time he scores a goal, he's earning a certain amount of money, etc, etc. And they're the type of deals that players over the age of maybe 35 or 34 tend to get when they plan to continue their careers. Now that Thiago has accepted these contract terms, the only thing we're now waiting for is for the player to complete his medical and get that started, which should happen very, very soon. So you guys, right now, we have three players that are about to sign for us. Thiago Silva, Kai Havertz and Ben Chilwell. And then after that, you guys, it seems like a goalkeeper is next on the agenda. The question is, are we going to go out big and go for an oil black? Or are we going to turn to the market, use our intelligence, rely on our coaching staff and find the very best possible goalkeeper to help take this team even more to the next level? But anyway, you guys, that is going to be me for today. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. Before I go, I'm actually thinking to do a Q&A live stream in the afternoon, maybe around 3 p.m. So if you like the idea of that, let me know in the comment section below. And on that point, you guys, I'm going to keep things moving. Thank you for watching. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lines CB. I'll catch you guys later.
with some more videos.